Welcome back to CarnDeities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is the difference between moral relativism and moral subjectivism. Now, simply put, moral relativism is the belief that the morality of an action differs from one person to another. The exact same action might be moral for one person, but immoral for another person. Moral subjectivism, on the other hand, claims that the morality of actions depends on the content of an individual's mental states, or a group of people's mental states, beliefs, desires, feelings, etc., of a person or persons, instead of some objective facts about the world. Relativism is contrasted with universalism, which claims that ethical statements apply equally and the same to everyone, while subjectivism is contrasted with objectivism that claims that ethical claims depend on objective facts about the world as opposed to subjective mental states in different people's heads. This video is going to explain in greater depth these two positions, explain why they are often confused, and give a couple of examples. So, first off, both moral relativism and moral subjectivism are what are known as meta-ethical theories. That means that they are about the kinds of things that right and wrong, good and evil are. Are moral statements true or false? Are they universal, etc.? Instead of being ethical theories about the kinds of things that are actually right and wrong. Ethical theories ask questions like, is it wrong to lie? Is it wrong to steal? Whereas meta-ethical theories ask the questions of what kinds of things are statements such as, it's wrong to lie. Are they statements expressing opinions? Are they statements expressing feelings, etc.? Other meta-ethical theories include emotivism, cognitivism, error theory, and more. Check out our video on ethics versus meta-ethics for more on that. Specifically, relativism and subjectivism are anti-realist positions. Realism in morality or ethics holds uh, three specific propositions. Both relativism and subjectivism reject the third of those claims, the metaphysical thesis, that claims that moral facts are robust and ordinary, given that both relativism and subjectivism say that moral facts are a little bit weird. Maybe, in the case of subjectivism, they're dependent on mental states, or in the case of relativism, they don't apply the same to everyone. Now, moral relativism and moral subjectivism are often conflated because many proponents hold both views. For the most part, if you're a relativist, you're probably also a subjectivist. Specifically, some philosophers claim that whether a statement about morality is true or false depends on the beliefs held by an individual or a people in their culture. For example, you might think that lying is wrong if people in your culture think that lying is wrong. This is a position that is both subjectivist and relativist. Others hold that it is simply a statement about your own beliefs, that something is wrong only if you yourself believe that it is wrong. And once again, this is relativist and subjectivist. This viewpoint is both relativist because it's different for different people. Different people live in different cultures or have different uh, mindsets about what right and wrong are. And it's about the beliefs of what is right and wrong, and therefore subjectivist because it's dependent on the mental states. So these are often conflated because they're often held together. However, they are independent positions. These are separate positions that you can hold independently. You can be a relativist and an objectivist, and you can be a subjectivist and a universalist. Let's see how. So the clear way to see that these positions are distinct is to show that it's possible for someone to be a relativist but not a subjectivist, or for someone to be a subjectivist but not a relativist. Let's start with the first example. Someone that believes that you should do whatever is written down in your personal holy text is an objective relativist. There are many different holy texts around the world with contradictory claims. So this person would be relativistic because morality doesn't apply universally. There are different maxims. Some people will be reading their holy text and saying, oh, I shouldn't eat pork. Some people will be reading their holy text and saying, oh, I shouldn't drink coffee, etc. It is relativistic because the rules applied are different. However, the claim is about something physical in the world. It's not saying you should do whatever people in your religion believe is the right thing to do. It's saying you should do whatever is written down in the holy text. What's written down in the holy text is an objective fact about the world. It's not something that is in people's heads. It's not about mental states. It's about a fact of the world. So it is, in that way, objectivist, not subjectivist. 
Similarly, if you said that you are morally required to obey the laws of your specific country, you would be an objective relativist. Because the laws of a country are objective facts about the world, they're written down physically somewhere. However, everyone's country has different laws. On the other hand, subjectivists can also be universalists. Some versions, for example, of monotheistic divine command theory, the argument that you should do whatever God wants you to do, claim that the right thing to do is whatever God thinks you should do. This is universalist because, under these views, everyone is bound by the same laws. This isn't saying you should do whatever your personal God thinks you should do, but rather that there's only one God, and whatever that God's mental state says you should do, you should do it everyone, regardless of what religion, culture, or personal views you have about ethics. However, it is also subjectivist because it's dependent on mental states, namely the mental states of God, not objective facts about the world. Similarly, Bill might claim that the right way for everyone to act is according to the consensus views on right and wrong of the people in Bill's own culture. Depending on multiple mental states, all of the different mental states of the people in Bill's culture form what he thinks is the right way to act for absolutely everyone. Once again, this is universalist because everyone is required to follow the same set of rules, but it is subjectivist because it's dependent on mental states. It's dependent on the mental states of all the people in Bill's culture. Probably a little bit harder to defend than the monotheistic divine command theory, but a potential position someone could hold that isn't at least logically inconsistent. Now, one quick note on relativism. Often philosophers distinguish between descriptive relativism, the empirical claim that in fact people do disagree about right and wrong, and meta-ethical relativism, which is what we're talking about here, which is the claim that the truth of a moral statement is dependent on who is saying it. There are a range of justifications for this meta-ethical claim and objections to this claim that we're not going to get into in great depth here. But often relativism is justified by the claim that disagreement exists and that these disagreements can't be rationally resolved and therefore we have to simply accept that people have different moralities. As a skeptic, I'm concerned that a lack of justification should in some way support the truth of a claim. When we don't know what right and wrong are or can't prove which ethical claim is correct, it doesn't seem to imply that they are all all correct and just for different people. That seems spurious to me. But more on that in a future video. In terms of ethical subjectivism, has sometimes this has sometimes been referred to, used to refer to other positions as well, or rather used to refer to more specific positions in kind of this broad definition we're taking for ethical subjectivism. In some cases, philosophers use it to refer to the viewpoint that ethical statements are merely statements of one's own belief. When I say X is bad or X is evil, I really mean that I believe that X is bad or X is evil. Other philosophers use this terminology to refer to something more akin to emotivism, the claim that moral statements are expressions of approval or disapproval. While both of these may be ethically subjectivist in that they're dependent on the mental states, they are not generally viewed as the only subjectivist positions possible. What do you think? Are you a subjectivist? Are you a relativist? Are you both? Are you neither? Are you something else? What is morality for you? What do moral statements mean? Is morality useful if it is different for each culture or each person? How can we go and say that another culture is doing something wrong? How can we debate morality if it's dependent on what people believe and not facts about the world? And does that mean that morality can change as people change their beliefs? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.